Jake Tapper is somewhat schizophrenic from a professional standpoint. He was a Democrat activist. He was the communications director for Handgun Control Inc. He was the press secretary to Marjorie Mezvinsky, who was a Democrat congresswoman from Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, whose son married into the Clinton family or something to that effect. Maybe it was her daughter. Uh, she only served one term. She was defeated. But in any event, he went on to work for news organizations. Uh, prior to CNN, he was on ABC. Uh, some people are big fans of his. I thought he was pretty good at one point, and then I realized, no, he's just another Trump hater. So, but he can ask some tough questions from time to time, but a lot of times he doesn't follow up. A lot of these guys in Washington and New York, they want to be liked by their colleagues. They socialize with them. They marry them. They cheat with them. Uh, they go to various events with them, you know, on and on and on. And it's a very small circle. And most of them are on the East Coast, as I said, uh, New York and Washington, D.C. But here he is interviewing Biden regarding Saudi Arabia, the midterms, the recession. And I'll bet you haven't seen most of this. So what we're going to do is work our way through some of it and respond to some of it on the fly here. So let's get started. Go. Some of your Democratic allies on Capitol Hill are afraid that the U.S. got played when you went to Saudi Arabia and fist bumped with the crown prince because now, obviously, a few months later, Saudi-backed OPEC is slashing oil production in partnership with Russia. The chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Menendez, just called for a freeze on cooperation with Saudi Arabia, including most arms sales. Senator Durbin, the number two Democrat in the Senate, says the Saudis sided with Russia against the United States. Do you think it's time for the U.S. to rethink its relationship with Saudi Arabia? Yes. And by the way, let's get straight why I went. I didn't go to one about oil. I went about making sure that we made sure that we weren't going to walk away from the Middle East. All right, stop. You don't need to go to the Middle East to make sure we're not going to walk away from the Middle East. And you know damn well he went there to talk about oil. The idiocy and the insanity of what's going on here is unbelievable. First of all, we dug this hole ourselves, the Democrat Party and Biden, by embracing this anti-American, anti-capitalism, anti-energy, phony climate change ideology. So now he's boxed himself in. So even though we could produce our way out of this, he won't allow us to produce our way out of this. So he's forced to, be to beg the third world monarchs, genocidal maniacs, whether it's Venezuela or Saudi Arabia or whatever else it is, to sell us oil. Now, none of this makes sense. Obviously, it has the same effect on carbon dioxide as all the rest of it. Uh, it's not like the atmosphere says, OK, great, that carbon dioxide comes from Saudi Arabia rather than Texas. And carbon dioxide isn't a pollutant anyway. Look it up. You exhale it every time you breathe, and the plants inhale it to create oxygen so we can survive. But he just lies. He says, I didn't go there to discuss oil. Yes, he did go there to discuss oil. And one of the things that just came out before this interview is that he begged the Saudis to wait, to wait to cut their supplies until it wouldn't affect the midterm elections. Now, that is how outrageous this man is. That is how outrageous this man is. And the reason the Democrats are angry isn't because Saudi Arabia is a dangerous country or however you want to define it. It's because it makes them look bad. It exposes the fact that we're now having to rely on OPEC, among other uh, combinations of countries, for our very survival when it comes to energy. It's insane. They've put us in this position. Their policies have put us in this position. And rather than reversing course, now we're going to go at it with Saudi Arabia. He pushed Saudi Arabia into the hands of Russia. Biden pushed Saudi Arabia into the hands of Russia. Now, like it or not, we need Saudi Arabia right now, not for oil, not for oil, but because our great enemy in that part of the world is Iran. We need Saudi Arabia, we need Egypt, we need Jordan, we need all these countries, and he's pushing them towards Russia. He's pushing them towards Russia. It's really shocking. 
which is why you don't hear the Putinoids complaining about any of this, by the way. Remember when he came into office and he said, forget about this America first stuff and this nationalism stuff. He's a globalist, right? Well, look what he did to Afghanistan. Those people are now in a death camp, effectively. That's what the country is. Look what he's doing to Israel with the Palestinians, uh, with the Iranians. Look how he's, uh, he's maneuvered his way out of our alliance, in effect, with Saudi Arabia. This is a guy who's supposed to be concerned about our global relationships. Is he kidding? We had far better relationships when Donald Trump was president than we have now with Saudi Arabia, with Israel. Iran was teetering. Uh, North Korea wasn't firing missiles over Japan. Russia hadn't invaded Ukraine. I mean, let's, let's have some context and perspective here. Go ahead. What was going on? And by the way, today, I just got off the telephone with the president of, of uh, uh, I, I, I got off the phone with the prime minister of Israel and the president of Lebanon. They've worked out a deal. They've been at war, declared war with one another for a long time. They've worked out a boundary relationship along the, in the, uh, in, in the Eastern Mediterranean for oil. I, and they're going to make an agreement that is historic. No, they're going to make an agreement. All right. Lapid is the putative prime minister of Israel. He took over for Bennett because Bennett couldn't retain support. There's an election in Israel in, a, in about two weeks, give or take. I'm going to be interviewing Benjamin Netanyahu for my Fox show this Sunday for the full hour about this and many other things. Now, that said, what this deal is that Biden is cutting with the, with the left-wing government in Israel which isn't even a legitimate government as far as I'm concerned, because Netanyahu got more support than they did, but he couldn't pull together the coalition. For personal reasons, some of these guys just don't like him, and they're willing to sell out their country. We have that same problem in our own country with people like Liz Cheney and so forth, in my view. What he's done, and where Jake Tapper should have followed up and said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Israel is agreeing under pressure to give oil reserves to Lebanon that currently Israel controls. Now, when you give oil reserves to Lebanon, you're giving them to Hezbollah because effectively Hezbollah calls the shots in Lebanon. Lebanon used to be a beautiful country. People used to be to go there for tourism. Uh, its, its beaches were second to none on the Mediterranean. It was as close to a democracy as you can get among Arab countries over there. Uh, the Hezbollah assassinated the Christian prime minister or president of Lebanon. They basically hold a gun to the head of the military there as well as to the government there. They are funded and supported and armed by Iran. They are a militia wing of Iran. And they have thousands of missiles aimed at Israel particularly Tel Aviv. And Biden, we, we worked out a deal, you know, that over, over this disputed, it talks about Lebanon, it's Hezbollah. Israel's going to give Hezbollah an oil field, effectively, that Israel needs for itself. But when you have these weak governments like we have, or like Israel has right now, and, they, and hope to God that we change ours and hope to God that they change theirs. This is what happens. But notice Tapper doesn't even follow up. Go. We also got overflights for Israeli planes over Saudi Arabia. We got movement. Those flights of Israeli planes over Saudi Arabia and so forth, that was something Trump laid the foundation for in Netanyahu. It had nothing to do with Biden. It had nothing to do with Biden. Uh, the progress with these, what they call the Gulf Arab states, was made as a result of the Abraham Accords, thanks to President Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu and their staffs. Biden had nothing to do with it. Biden is selling out to the Palestinian terrorists, whether it's Hamas or the so-called Palestinian Authority, which is corrupt as it gets, where Abbas is, 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 is positioned as some kind of moderate by the New York Times and the rest. But that's not who he is. Abbas was behind the Munich attacks 
on the Israeli athletes there who were tortured and murdered? You might remember that, some of you, 1972. And Abbas has an order out, as I speak, that any Palestinian who sells property to a Jew, it's a capital offense. They will be executed. Also, any Palestinian who commits terrorist acts against Jews, uh, he, she, and their family will have a lifetime pension paid for by the Palestinian Authority. It gets worse. Furthermore, the entire economy, such as it is, is controlled by Abbas and his family and his political allies. They have divided the territory up in a way where it's like a mob operation. So he doesn't have any challengers. He's been president for life. Uh, they have these, uh, these, these poor Palestinians who they keep poor and they keep in these so-called refugee camps and they parade these European uh, uh, officials, UN officials through that camp. But some Palestinians live very, very wealthy because uh, the money that the governments give to them, whether it's the United States, Trump cut it off. He said, enough of this. Europe, other countries, it goes somewhere, doesn't go to the people. Uh, so that's what's going on with the Palestinians. And last week, they executed a woman who was gay, brutally executed her because somebody tattled on her and said she was gay. This is how they operate. I didn't hear a damn thing from any of the gay communities in America, by the way, but maybe it's because I'm not on their mailing list. Go. In terms of how we would deal in the Middle East with aggression from Iran, but it wasn't, you know, there were eight other, there were eight other parties there. It wasn't about, it wasn't about oil. Okay, but you but, would. But we should, we should, and I am uh, in the process when the, when the, uh, uh, the House and Senate gets back, there's, they're going to have to, uh, there's going to be some consequences for what they've done with Russia. So now he's threatening Saudi Arabia. He's threatening Saudi Arabia. He's undermining Israel. He's negotiating with Iran that has assassination hits out on Mike Pompeo, among other American officials. Think about this. He's prepared to give what is equivalent to $1.2 million in sanction relief to the regime in Iran. And of course, he talks about an alliance. That regime in Iran is aligned militarily now with China and Russia. Uh, they're selling oil to China. They're providing drones to Russia. And what is the consequences for that? Absolutely nothing. Appeasement. Absolute appeasement. So this is their policy in the Middle East, which is incoherent. He's just offended, you see, because here's an election. His policies are ass backwards. Joe Biden has pushed policies. Some of his governor friends, like Newsom, have pushed policies, which make it impossible for people on fixed incomes or low incomes to make ends meet. And so now it was Putin before, now it's Saudi Arabia today. No, it's Biden. And it's the Democrat Party. Go. What kind of consequences? Menendez says suspend all arms sales. Is that something you'd consider? I'm not going to get into what I'd consider and what I. If I'm... they suspended, quote unquote, all arms sales to Saudi Arabia, what do you think Saudi Arabia would do? They buy them from China. That's simple. So we'd be turning our influence with Saudi Arabia over to communist China. They would buy weaponry from communist China. So China would have an in with Saudi Arabia and Iran. Russia now has an in with Saudi Arabia and Iran. This is Biden. This is Biden. This is the geniuses who surround Biden. Want to see more? Sign up for Levin TV.